pilotworkshops.com, your web destination for pilot education. In this session, Bob will go back and review the key safety tips that were covered in the workshop. These are the key takeaways we hope you'll remember and apply on all your night flights. We've, uh, we've spent considerable time looking at the challenges that are associated with nighttime flying, as, as well we should. The fatal accident rate in the nighttime environment certainly must get our attention, and obviously we need to do some very, very important things to, to make sure that we're not setting ourselves up for failure. First and foremost, in the nighttime environment, we must be aware of the limitations that are posed. The loss of visual reference uh, based upon the lack of feedback that we're sending to our brain must be compensated for. Um, to, to try to conduct the same level of safe flight uh, with the loss of 75% of the information we normally have uh, isn't going to get it done. So we, we need to be aware of, of how the eye functions, the difference between how our eyes work in the daytime and the nighttime, and, and the loss of very, very valuable information. And if we don't compensate for that information loss, um, we're going to be way, way behind the airplane. Planning is, is tremendously important on any flight, uh, but in the nighttime environment, it, it takes on added significance. Uh, if we don't adequately study and prepare for the in route portion, uh, analyze the altitude and the route that we're going to take, have a thorough familiarization of both our departure and our destination airport and the environment in which they exist to include weather and NOTAM information, um, we're setting ourselves up to fail. We must introduce cockpit resource management. We need to use all available resource, have airport diagrams, use approach plates, have current charts, and we need to put special emphasis on being organized. We need to set up our cockpits so that all the information we need is readily available to us. So we don't need to be searching, looking for information which may cause us to move our head around uh, excessively and, and maybe set up a vertigo disorientation situation. The need for instrument training cannot be overemphasized. While legally we can operate at night without an instrument uh, certification, the accident uh, rates at night validate on an on a ongoing basis uh, the need for instrument skills. Once again, we're losing tremendous amount of information with the loss of visual feedback. We must balance that loss of information with getting as much instrument training as we can possibly get wonderful, wonderful insurance and will give us a much more solid foundation for flying at night. Emergency training, uh, while very, very important daytime, once again has an added dimension at night. The simplest of problems can be complicated at night um, based upon the added complexity and the loss of uh, valuable information. So you need to have a plan for how you're going to deal with emergency procedures and do conduct realistic training so that you're prepared for any emergency at night. Um, thorough awareness of vertigo disorientation is a must. Um, we, we need to be aware that we're set up for vertigo and disorientation with the loss of visual reference. Well, in the nighttime environment, we're operating in a diminished state of visual feedback to the brain, which sets us up for vertigo disorientation on every nighttime flight. The most hazardous area of nighttime flying, obviously, is approach and landing. This is where the accidents occur. Uh, we must be thoroughly aware of the challenges that occur as we approach the airport and set up for landing, and the tools that we talked about in the workshop how to compensate for the loss of visual references by using instrument skills to provide us the information we need to make a safe approach and landing. VFR, fly the standard pattern. IFR, adherence to minimums are a must. 
for all approach and landings. Everything we do in the nighttime regime must be done in a slow down mode. We are used to rushing as pilots. We never allow enough time to get the job done right. This just won't work at night. From taxi to letting our vision adapt to conducting our pre-flight to familiarizing ourselves with our cockpits, everything takes longer at night. Allow yourself extra time. Don't allow yourself to get in the rushed mode or you're going to set yourself up for failure. Last and certainly the most important is the subject of proficiency. How can you be good at something you do so seldom? Ask yourself, how often do I get out and fly at night? You know, three takeoffs and landings to a full stop in the category of class of the airplane will make you legal, but will it make you safe? Hardly. You need to get out and operate in the nighttime environment, conduct realistic training on a regular basis before you subject yourself and your passengers to the challenges of nighttime flying. Remember, any deficiencies we have with our flying will certainly be magnified by nighttime flying. Flying at night is a glorious enterprise. It's, it's as exhilarating as anything we do in flying, but we certainly don't want to turn our night flight into a nightmare by not being prepared. Make sure you're proficient. Make sure you're sharp. Make sure your skills are up to speed before you launch at night.